Hi everyone, and welcome in the part three of how to build studio. This episode will be entirely focused on the acoustic treatment. I will walk you through my acoustic panels and explain you which frequency we um, treated um, with a particular panel. Um, I still learn the sound of the room, I have to admit, because obviously when you build a new room, you have to learn um, how the room sounds like and your speakers, etc. But the results are amazing and the studio sounds very live. It doesn't sound boxy, that was our idea. Hence, I would like to today to walk you through the acoustic treatment we, we've put into a room and obviously how we dealt with the obstacles in a room um, which we have quite a few which brings me to the room improvement um, so once you're going to have an idea how the room look like and where is the place for the improvement um, I will insta Sonowork software which is the frequency correction software so we will do a live measurement of my speakers and see results later you probably know the software um, it's everywhere um, but I wanted to check if it's worth it um, does it bring any value to my studio and how would it respond for the obstacles we have in the room I will do live speakers measurements just to see the results later but at the moment I would like to show you how the studio looks like from the listening position first Right, so let's crack on. So what we have in the box? Oh my god, I can't open it. Okay. So there is some instruction here. So activation key and the mic. So that will. So we will leave this for later for the measurement. Right. So let's install the software first. Okay, complete installation. Okay, download for Windows. Okay, let's just put my mic um, calibration here. I'm not a robot. Duh, duh, duh. Download profile. And let's just download for Windows. This chair makes noise. Alright, it's installing now. One, two, three, yeah, audio is recording. Alright, launch reference. Launch reference. Okay, so what's next? Download software, done. Complete installation, done. Enter your activation code, that's all done. How to calibrate? It doesn't say. For speaker calibration. Okay, here how to use for speaker. Run the measure up and measure your studio acoustics. It takes around 15 minutes. Save the results uh, Save the results as profile. And open it. For maximum versatility, calibrate your entire system sound by running the installed system up. Okay, both downloaded. So you've got Sonarworks reference for your speakers and headphones. But I'm now interested of um, the measure, reference for measure. So let's just measure. Yes. Okay, phantom power on. Yep, I've changed that. Serial number is correct. Yep. 
All right, so let's just measure my speakers. Okay, so keep the microphone within your listening spot. Hold the microphone the same level. Da -da -da. That will be here. Next. Get ready with the mic input gain and your audio. Hold there like this. Right. When you're ready, start. Um, I had to increase my input um, gain on device, it showed me the message, um, my preamp was on, um, on too low input, so basically how it works, it just shows you when it's too high gain and too low, so we just did that now, so let's start again. How to measure speaker distance? Don't stand by speaker, stand by I know exactly by speaker distance because when we built the studio, we did um, um, triangle. This is basically what you need to do now. Position, okay, so that was the first measurement and the second one is to, to measure the speaker. So you need to position one, two centimeters from the center of the mid-range driver. That's fine, next. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Hmm. Left speaker done. It, they came up with a 132 between the listening position and the speaker, which it's actually 176. But because my head is somewhere between here, I think they took the yes end of the microphone um, to, to the cone. And I agree with that because that will be about 40 centimeters different. So I will leave it with 132, um, especially that I'm moving quite often um, to, to deal with my gear. So yeah, I will just leave it 132. That looks good for me. Left speaker done. So this one isn't really accurate because it's about 143 instead of 133, so I will just increase um, the value. Now listening area measurement. During this step, we will measure your listening area. This is based on the measurements you carried out earlier. It just shows you where you're supposed to put the mic and if you can't do it properly... Oh, come on! There is a 30 different tries um, in the whole area for each speaker and I've got three sets of speakers um, 90 times Show results Oh my god Okay, so let's save these as So um, I just calibrated all my speakers and um, they're saying it's 15 minutes. But if you think if you have a three pairs of speakers and each of them need to be calibrated in the 30 different positions, um, yeah, you do the maths. So it took me quite a while, but here are the results. 
Um, so let's start with the Denodio. What I've done is um, I did two calibrations. So one with the um, double glazed doors exposed, and the second calibration was uh, with the um, panels closed. And um, the results are, yeah, amazing. I mean, if you can, let's focus on the low end. So maybe I go into zoom in because the high end basically looks the same for both. But if I will zoom in, will be much better. Yeah, let's just see this way. Hang on. Okay, so I think you can see this much better. So this is the problem which I wanted to, to show you. It's such a wide dip here, which is like 3 dB, um, but it's much wider here. And look what's happened when I have closed the door. So when I cover the glass, um, it became much narrower and the most important, which just proves you how, um, how problematic are glass surfaces, is this part here. So um, this is obviously the reflection from the glass and look, completely disappeared. So um, yeah, it just shows you how the acoustic treatment is important, especially on the glass um, surfaces. So this has been treated and I'm happy with that. Um, this again, much, much bigger improvement. Um, but these two didn't really change much because it's nothing to do with the glass. It's, it's purely um, the low end um, amplification, uh, which quite surprised me because we treated pretty well the um with the base absorption and and everything um the low end so i need to go back now to the jik and try to find a solution what to add to the room to get rid of this or, or at least to um minimize i would be happy with the three dbs to be honest but let's see what they're going to say um so now let's just um compare my din audio with nstance Obviously, we all know NSTs don't have um, low end, so let's just forget about low end. Let's just focus on the meats. So again, let me just zoom it a little bit. Okay, let's just put maybe the node on the right side and all right. So again, Yamaha and the Nodio, both calibrations done with the covered doors. Um, the double glazed doors. So yeah, massive dip here, 6 dB um, in this area. Much better than audio, much, much better. Again, much bigger dip in the high end than the audio. Uh, but obviously we all know um, NSTens are NSTens. I'm using them for all acoustic instruments to, as a second reference, um, guitars, etc. Um, they're really revealing, they are unforgivable. They're revealing absolutely everything and anything. I love them and I'm definitely an NSTens team. I know people hate them, but I found them, they are the best to, to uh, make a second reference for piano, acoustic guitars and, and snares, etc. So I really like them. So yeah, I've ho I have two different profiles um, for two different speakers. I won't show you um, HS7s because um, these were um, measured uh, without sub, but I've got a sub um, connected to them. These are just my th third speakers for the third reference. I'm not really using them that much. Um, it's just to check the final mix if it doesn't sound horrible on them. I'm mostly based on the audio. That's my main speakers and NSTens. So I think these two graphs are the most important, especially for JIK guys, just to show them what we achieved. Um, and yeah, and now is the time to improve the room um, in the terms of how the mixes sound like with the sonar works on. Um, I was absolutely amazed um, how they improved um, the quality of the sound. Um, I definitely um, feel this amplification of um, the low end of the audio. I didn't realize th this before, um, but once I um, swap to sonar works it only then you can you can feel it and um and a stance i'm not sure if i'm going to use them with an stance because i like the ns10 sounds as it is now obviously um i got used to them um even in this room so i'm not sure i want any um frequency correction on an stance but i will definitely use sonar works on my den audio
So yeah, overall, um, I'm really happy with the results. Um, as you guys know, there's no such thing as perfect room, but um, I'm happy what we have achieved, uh, taking under consideration that this room had so many obstacles. And as you can see, the filler behind me and the double glazed doors and the window. Um, so yeah, I think uh, overall it's a really good result. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and um, see you in the next video.